Well, your voice finally breaks in 1987. Had you dreaded it happening? I was looking forward to it, to be honest with you. I was on every kind of TV and radio show every day, sort of saying why my voice hadn't broken. Honestly, it was just a relief. It really was. After your voice had changed, your old records began to make a big impact in Japan. All 16 of your albums reached number one in their classical charts. You head east on tour and you become an idol for teenage fans there. Did you learn any Japanese? I did, yeah. I can say really useful things like, Watashi no eo kajiro no adarida, which means, who's eating my chocolate house? <laughs> I, was, I was narrating Hansel and Gretel in Japanese. So, right. uh... so it's 1988. You're 18 and you're accepted by the Royal Academy of Music, the youngest male student in the history of the Academy to study there. Your singing tutor was Kenneth Bowen. When you're 21, you decide to study drama and you win a place at the prestigious Bristol Old Vic Theatre School. After graduating in 1995, you play the lead in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. But Alid, your dressing room was nothing but red and white. He was Pharaoh at the time, David Higgins. <laughs> So David, tales from the dressing room. <laughs> Please not. Don't worry, Alid, it's okay. Um, I don't know if people are aware, but uh, Alid's a, a staunch Arsenal supporter. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. There's one other here. <laughs> so uh, consequently, his uh, dressing room was always uh, decked out in Arsenal uh, memorabilia and uh, paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. But I suppose the uh, lasting memory was uh, our last night in Blackpool. Half of Wales turned up, if you remember. Yep. And uh, congregated outside the stage door and in singing full, hymns. Absolutely. See, in full voice singing the uh, Welsh national anthem, as mm -hmm. I remember. Hours before we got home that night. But um, <laughs> anyway, congratulations. Thanks, mate. Nice seeing you again. I love it to see Take you again, mate. Thank you, David. Thank you. Over the years, you've worked with some of the world's most distinguished musicians. Here is a note from your friend at the cellist, Julian Lloyd Webber. Sounds all right on cello, doesn't it, Alice? <laughs> anyway, congratulations for being on This Is Your Life. You are a true professional. When we worked together at Cardiff, you didn't need a single retake. So I hope you have a really good evening tonight, even if you did beat me on Ready Steady Cook. <laughs> In 1997, you encounter hard times, but it is better than it sounds. It was the Charles Dickens classic at the Northampton Royal. Your co-stars are here for you tonight. Ken Farrington, Janet Brown, and Philip Maddock. Oh Janet, the company had a special warm-up routine. Well, yes, we did. We did. We, we used to meet in this sort of dreary rehearsal room, and we had to start off our day with a warming-up exercise. And I had this terrible voice that would go, hoo, 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 and you would look at me in utter amazement. And then you would hit a higher note, and I'd think I'll beat that. And so I, As she I, always did. I would start with a lot on, and of course, in the end, Everything had to be given up because we had laughed so much and broken up the rehearsal, which is very naughty of us, but great fun. I think that's what happens throughout the play as well, wasn't yes, it? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, he was boisterous, he was enthusiastic, he was committed. He was a very good actor and is a very good actor. He's a very good presenter in English and Welsh. He's still a very good singer. Ken, what's your memory? A Hard Times was a good title for the play, I can tell you, because <laughs> the only joy I got on that tour was playing tennis with Alid, week <laughs> after week after week, and he was a very generous player. He let me lose to him week after week <laughs> after week. For someone who sang one of the nation's favourite Christmas songs, it's not mm -hmm. surprising that you are a devoted supporter of the charity The Story of Christmas. Mm -hmm. With your help, its annual carol service has raised nearly three million pounds for disadvantaged children and the homeless. A report now from the charity's chairman, Robert Spooner. You're now Deputy President of the Appeal, and characteristically, you never draw attention to your own role. But I know, perhaps better than most, just how much time and effort you give. 
money has been used on projects like this one at Kids Active's Michael Williams Playground in Fulham, where the youngsters are enjoying the equipment that you help to provide. You may remember you came down here a couple of years ago to present the check. So thanks, Alid, for all you've done to help so many other people. Loads of love to you tonight, and I look forward to seeing you when I'm back in London and sharing a glass or three.